it's always so awkward at the beginning, especially when you're here, because I'm you're quiet and then I'm waiting to talk. Well. Okay. Let's start. Uh, this is Aiden from Third Tier. Today we're gonna finally do a project that I've been wanting to do for a while. This is a steel Zippo. It's not a real Zippo, as you can see, it's not a Zippo, but it's a steel Zippo style lighter. A steel insert. You can't really find uh, authentic Zippos that are made of steel because they only made them during World War II and those things are collector's items and they're really expensive. Basically what you're going to need is you're going to need a metal lighter like this, uh, some glassware because the acid won't eat through it. I'm using muriatic acid. You can use etching solution or other types of acid, but muriatic acid is also more commonly known as hydrochloric acid. Um, nail polish if you're going to do a, a pattern or to protect the hinge because the acid won't eat through that. Hydrogen peroxide, this is going to be your oxidizer in the solution. And acetone to clean everything off before you start to acid etch it. So the first step you should do is, uh, okay, first of all, safety precautions. You need to wear some kind of plastic or rubberized gloves. And to be safe, you should get them as long as possible. Like these are ladies cleaning gloves. Very comfy on the inside. Highly recommend them. And you should just cut off a little piece down here on the sleeve and put a drop of the acid that you're using onto it. And it'll be safe if, if there's no bubbles, no reaction, and it doesn't eat through the glove. Um, if, it's, if, it's, if you pass that test, you should be able to use those gloves uh, without hurting yourself. Also, you should wear protective eyewear, plastic. Basically, anything you should be using should be plastic or glass. Ideally, if you're in uh, an enclosed space or a place with poor ventilation, you should get some kind of respirator mask because muriatic acid gives off chlorine gas when it's reacting with metals, which is uh, actually a, a chemical weapon that's been outlawed in war since World War I, along with mustard gas. So you don't want to mess around with this stuff. It's serious, so put your serious pants on, and let's get started. One thing I forgot to mention was you probably need a rag, too. First thing, take the insert out of your Zippo, place it on a paper towel or a rag, and get some acetone. This part really doesn't have to be too tricky. Just open up the acetone. Acetone's relatively safe to mess with. It's a solvent. Um, pour some on your lighter. Spread it around, get your rag, and just wipe it off. Nice and clean because you don't want uh, debris or anything in the uh, in the mixture when you put it in the acid. Just wipe it off. The, the acetone will evaporate and it should be clean. And then to make your, your acid etching solution you need to get... I usually add the acid to the hydrogen peroxide. Choose one of these um, small glass bowls fill it about halfway with the peroxide. In the end it's going to need to be a 50-50 solution. That's going to take way too long. Get hydrogen peroxide without a squirt cap. So fill out about half, halfway. Dump it into a larger bowl. Now take your acid, be careful with it because it can get on things. If it does get on something that I don't want it to get on, I'll show you guys the reaction. On concrete, it really uh, gets crazy. And try not to use a knife that you care about to open it. It's already eaten away at this uh, plastic seal. You'd be surprised how cheap this uh, acid is, considering it's not a friendly substance to have around your house. <sighs> Smells. So pour this about halfway with the acid. Make sure nothing's dripping. And then pour that into your oxidizer. The 
You see there's some gas coming out. There's probably some debris left in the... Really try not to breathe it in. It burns. It doesn't feel good. Take this, make sure it's clean. And now for an optional part, if you want to add a design with the... Uh, I'm just using my sister's nail polish that she doesn't like. It really doesn't matter what color it is because it's all coming off in the end. Or you can also use wax. I'm going to go get a toothbrush or a paintbrush and show you how to do that. Alright, so I got a little just arts and crafts paintbrush. It's not going to be a thing that we're going to worry about if it gets destroyed. Just clean it off with some acetone to get any residue and uh, other paints off. Should be clean now. Dry it off because the nail polish isn't going to like the nail polish remover. Just going to take the whole thing, that thing out, that brush out. Put this brush in. Get a lot of it. I'm going to paint over the hinge just because I don't want it to get messed up with the acid. And I'm going to paint over the, the crack. Just so not as much acid it gets inside. Now I'm going to... Probably gonna need to get more. Who knows what this is gonna turn out like actually? No one. Where you put polish, the acid shouldn't eat through. And where the polish is heavier, it'll eat through less. And where it's lighter, it should eat through a little bit. So I'm kind of going for like a rough texture. Hopefully that's what'll come out with this technique. I kind of want it to be nail polish shut also. I don't want it to come open. I don't want to get the inside messed up. Because what I did with the last Zippo that I made like this, the inside kind of ate away and now the lighter doesn't fit in there as well and it's loose. It's more loose than others. Anyway. Now let the nail polish dry and you should be ready to put it in. When you put it in just make sure it doesn't splash or get on you or anything you don't want to get acid on. This can be a tricky part. It's stuck to my fingers because of the... there we go. Alright, I'm going to bring it in closer so that everyone can see what's going on here in the acid. It's not submerged all the way, so I'm going to push it down. It's because the lighter is still full of air, which is actually not a bad sign since I don't want the acid to get to the inside. As you can see though, the acid's reacting with the metal and the acid should turn green by the end of this. Depending on how, how long you keep it in is going to change the color. The longer you keep it in, the darker it's going to be. My end result, I want it to look like this. This knife, which is a Spyderco, tenacious. That had an acid sun washed on on it. I kind of want that finish to match this knife. So this is my first time trying it. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but uh, we'll see how it turns out and I'll get back to you when I think this is ready.